I'm Captain Dharmveer. I'm a Japanese honors and graduate from Jawaharlal Nehru University. I did my army tenure from 2002 to 2007. After that, I did my MBA from Narsimonji. I have worked for corporates like Tata's, India Mart, Aviva Life Insurance, uh, represented the country in uh, Europe through Rotary's vocational exchange program. Uh, why I'm telling all of this is because I want to also tell you that behind all of this, there is the guy who comes from Gorakhpur. Where in Hindi medium school, he was studying for the 12th grade. William, Ville, Vilayak, he used to use such terms. He was doing a lot of vigyan, rasayan vigyan, ji vigyan, jantu vigyan. He was doing a lot of work. And uh, English as a subject was introduced to me when I was in class 6th. This might sound a very exaggerated statement, but uh, yes, that's how UP board is. So uh, the first point lesson that I want to bring in front of all of you is don't ever blame your background for your failures. So with this, I, I would want to talk five milestones of my life, which helped me reach where I am today. And uh, I will start from the first incidence and that was my decision to go to JNU. So I was a fairly decent student and my parents wanted me to become a doctor because my father was an engineer and he never wanted me to become an engineer. Uh, I was fairly doing good. I was uh, going to a coaching center. I was in first five students of the coaching center and my cousin was doing his post graduation from KGMU, King George's Medical College in Lucknow. And I visited him just to get some guidance. I still remember I knocked his door and for first six to seven minutes, he did not open the door. And like any 18, 19 year old child, I, I just thought that probably he's inside with his girlfriend or something. But after five minutes, when he opened the door, he was sitting with this thick book in his hand. And back then in nineties, uh, medical profession was not like a nine to five uh, job. You know, you had to create a name for yourself. And if you've not got this from your uh, family, medical, and uh, law students, they had to really, really struggle a lot. And uh, so he narrated, you know, the journey that he has had in his life, five years of MBBS and then internship and then a couple of years of masters. And then you had to start establishing yourself. After meeting him, uh, the first lesson that I learned in my life was that it is often important to know what you want to do in life, you know, because that's where you set your goals. But I learned that it's rather important to know what you do not want to do in life. And that helps you strike off all those options which are ambiguous, which kind of uh, doesn't allow you to get focused on something uh, which you may not want to do, which is not you. So I think that's, that's the first uh, learning that I have for uh, all you guys. My second uh, milestone, the biggest milestone that I call is uh, the decision to join the Defense Forces. So all of this is 1999. Of course, one of the reasons is that Kargil war was on and everybody who was coming back from the war zone, uh, the whole country was respecting that. But my reasons were different. My wife, who was my girlfriend at that point in time, is about three and a half years older than me. While I graduated, she post-graduated and she had no other reason to wait. The family rather doesn't, didn't have any other reason for wait and not get her married. And as a graduate and 21 year old guy, I wanted to reciprocate to the fact that she had been so, so good to me. She had been there in all my good and bad times. And I never wanted to just let go of her because she was three and a half years older to me. Uh, it wasn't easy, but I reached out to my parents. First of all, I convinced him uh, because of my background. They understood that he may not be doing something now, but I surely had given them hope that I would be doing something. When I reached out to my in-laws, they were nice enough to allow me time. And they gave me 12 months time. And that's how I started preparing for my army uh, exam. I gave my written, I gave my SSB, and with God's grace, without any temporary rejection, in less than 11 months time, uh, from the day of writing my entrance, or you can say the CDS exam, I was in the academy. So the lesson that I would want to tell or give all you youngsters here is, 
that please respect your relationships you know and i always tell people that when you get into a relationship early in your life you do not have too many evaluating factors uh you don't really look at the kind of salary the other person your partner is making you don't really look at the kind of background because when you meet your partners at an early age you all are equals because either you are in college or you are in a job which is uh you know pretty much you, you are uh, peers but as you grow in life we start to evaluate we start to work like a calculator and computer you know and pros and cons are there so please 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 respect uh, your relationships this is the second lesson that i uh, the second milestone through which i want to draw this lesson for all you guys who are here now uh, let's talk about the third milestone so this is about an interview which happened after my army tenure i i went to narsi monji mumbai for my mba and like any mba school uh, they had their campus interviews planned for all of us and the campus interview was supposed to start from a particular date and i of course wanted to be part of that uh, whole process i was married i had kids and my wife and kids were in banaras i have twins and both the kids were not well i thought i will quickly come to banaras see my kids and next week when the interviews are starting i will be uh, back on the campus tatas were supposed to be the best company till then uh, which was coming on campus they did a very smart thing and they preponed their campus interview by a week because they never wanted to miss on any other any good guy uh, any good mbas institute if you if you through with one company then you do not sit for the rest of the interviews and they wanted to have the first mover advantage the list was prepared 25 candidates were selected by tatas and unfortunately i was not there in that list because my name was never there in the list i was not present and the course coordinator thought that uh, captain dharmveer is not here so obviously he would not appear for the uh, for the interview landline ka zamana tha wo and when i got the call I spent twenty five thousand rupees to reach Mumbai the same evening. From Banaras, I took a flight to Delhi, and from Delhi, I flew to Bombay. The next day, I asked my course coordinator to put my name. He said he can't do it because it's too late, and obviously his reputation was at stake. You couldn't have he couldn't have done that. I reached out to Tata's office, where all other students, so to say, were there. I reached out to. the lady who was coordinating the whole interview process and uh, it didn't work out i requested the lady to allow me to meet the com- the authority as a guest i said okay fine i will not be part of the interview but at least let me see the person who is responsible for this whole interview process for 2 minutes after a lot of re- request the fact that i come from an army background and also i was a genuine candidate from the campus i was allowed and i took 15 minutes to convince the lady i still remember her name vidya jindal that why i should be part of uh, this interview forum and after that i came out now the, another interesting thing that happened in that interview process is the interview was being carried Uh, it it was there were two rooms where the interviews were happening first 13 students were going to room number 1 and second uh, the second group 13 the rest of the 13 students would go to room number 2 the whole group got divided alphabetically 1 to 13 a b c and d to z z was group number 2 i was number 1 starting with d in group 2 can you imagine when i entered the interview room who was heading that uh, board of interviewers the lady i convinced to make me part of that interview body and the moment i opened the door she smiled and she said iska interview to ho gaya adse aur kya baat karni hai so guys i'm not exaggerating it took me 5 minutes and i had my dream job in my hand 
the lesson that i want to bring forward from this example is very often in life we think things are beyond us and it will not work out for us we don't even try for it a small example suppose you want to you know travel somewhere and you have a flight if you want to book it the same day you would already assume that the tickets would be expensive and you would not try that please try and do your bit mauke milte nahi hain mauke banaye jate hain so this was the third milestone of uh, in my life let's talk about fourth milestone how did i go to how did i decide to go to khatron ke khiladi yes so my job was there i was working for tatas and five months in my job and i was sitting on my desk one fine day i received a call and this call was from vicom 18 uh, back then in 2008 vicom 18 was a channel known for two things nix which was a cartoon channel and uh, cnbc 18 which was a news channel they wanted to launch a daily soap kind of a channel that channel happened to be colors and the show that they wanted to launch colors channel with was supposed to be khatron ke khiladi the guy told me that he wants to audition me and uh, i was surprised because i had never ever faced any audition or something of that sort so i asked him very categorically that are you sure that you want you want to talk to me to which he responded that with a reference that in page on page number 34 of narsi monji's placement brochure if that's me and probably uh, that gave me a different kick and i was absolutely sure that yes he he is talking about myself only and i went for my uh, audition you know i i did not have luxury of time to go for that uh, audition twice thrice uh, because that's how they wanted it they wanted me to rehearse certain questions and come back and give the audition which luxury i did not have so there was this thin guy he took me upstairs he set up the camera and he started asking me those questions you know i come from gorakhpur after that i went to allahabad and after that i went to jnu इन सारी जगहों पे हिंदी बोलने वाले लोगों की बहुत ज्यादा मात्रा है एंड आई थिंक आई एम एब्सोल्युटली कॉन्फिडेंट कि मेरी हिंदी ऐसी है कि अगर मैं कोई सेंटेंस शुरू करूं और अगर बीच में कोई ग्रामेटिकल मिस्टेक कर दूं तो सेंटेंस खत्म करते करते मैं उस ग्रामेटिकल मिस्टेक को करेक्ट करके वो सेंटेंस बना दूंगा और आई हैड नथिंग टू लूज यू नो एंड दिस फ्रेज फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन माई लाइफ आई अंडरस्टूड की नथिंग टू लूज का मतलब क्या है आई वेंट देर फॉर फन i was already in a good job and this was not a dream thing for me okay uh ye ek bahut far fetched sapna tha ki main mumbai mein hu kya main kabhi tv pe aa sakta hu aur for sure ek bar main audition dene zarur jana chahta tha so this audition lasted for about 45 minutes when i came down this executive rank guy tells me ki sir aapko jitna paisa mangna hoga aap mang lijiyega aap zarur jayenge i did not take his words uh, very seriously and the reason for that is you know it's like uh, any normal company hr policy when you go for an interview no one tells you that you screwed up and don't show up again you always send the person with good greetings and tell them that you were nice and uh, we'll see you soon this did not end there i think one uh, one month down i was in my office and i received this ब्राउन ऑनवलप यू वो वाला होता है ना जिसको आप हमेशा हाथ से सोचते हो खोल दोगे बट इवेंचुअली यू हैव टू ब्रिंग ब्रिंग सीजर्स टू ओपन इट दैट सरकारी ब्राउन ऑनवलप येलो ब्राउन ऑनवलप एंड इट हैड माय कॉन्ट्रैक्ट आई वुड नॉट डिस्क्लोज द नंबर्स बट इट हैज इट हैड ऑलमोस्ट फाइव टाइम्स माय एनुअल सैलरी एज साइनिंग अमाउंट एंड आई ऑल्सो हैड टू पुट सम डेली numbers because the show format was such that every day one pair will go out so that's how i traveled to johannesburg with akshay kumar and 13 uh, bollywood models slash actresses and uh, i was the finalists unfortunately i lost the show but i learned a lot i think it changed me as an individual uh, and and the kind of confidence i gained uh, the kind of fear i overcame there i i it made me much stronger so this was number 4 number 5 uh the decision to get into fitness 
after 15 years of coming out of army uh, i started running again in 2016 i chose it because i used to feel little depressed i was totally into office work the time management had gone for a six and my health was not great i was smoking like a chimney i would look forward to reasons when i can go out and probably do party and stuff like that and that's not the life that i actually wanted for myself i started my journey with a small half marathon and then i did bombay full marathon after running the bombay full marathon i realized people who close in within 4 hours वो जो पानी और टॉवल देने वाले लोग हैं ना वो भी सिर्फ उन्हीं को पूछते हैं एज एन इवेंट ऑर्गेनाइजिंग बॉडी देर पेशेंस गिवस अप आफ्टर फोर आवर्स फोर एंड हाफ आवर्स यू नो एंड पीपल हु रीच इन यू नो एक तो उनको दौड़ने में पांच घंटे लगे विच इज मच मोर एफर्ट देन समबडी हु रन द मैराथन अंडर फोर आवर्स एंड देन यू आर नॉट वेलकम एट द फिनिश लाइन बिकॉज ऑल द ग्लोरियस पीपल हु रन देर मैराथन नाइसली they have crossed the line and uh, now there is celebration happening prize ceremony happening and everything is happening on on that on the other side and i challenged myself that i want to run bombay marathon again next year and i would do it in less than 4 hours some hard work some practice some discipline some science and i did that i again went back to bombay i did that in 3 hours and 55 minutes i again went back to bombay i did that in 3 hours and 47 minutes last year february when i ran in delhi i ran this distance of 42 kilometers which is a full marathon in 3 hours and 38 minutes just to put it in perspective on treadmill if you run at a pace of 12 i repeat if you run at a pace of 12 you will be able to run a full marathon in 3 hours and 38 minutes uh i aspire to run boston which is a time qualification uh, kind of a marathon and i am pretty sure i would someday be able to do that 2019 i was diagnosed with hernia and that's the year i did my mountaineering course because my doctor suggested that no one has ever died of hernia so please keep challenging yourself you yourself do not know your potential unless you expose yourself to that uncomfortable zone don't get into your comfortable zone before i finish my talk i would want to tell you one thing i would want to promise you one thing when i was 20 year old i was an insecure guy i did not know if i'll get through jnu i did not know if i'll go to army i did not know if i'll have a good career i did not know i'll do mba from a premier institute of the country i did not know i will do tv i knew nothing i didn't know that i will have twins i didn't know i'll get married to the girl that i always wanted to get married to when i was insecure i had nothing i could do what i could do in last 20 years i want to promise you today when i am secured today when i know that i have certain security around me things are fine i only want to promise you that my 40 to 60 would be better than my 20 to 40 thank you so very much for having me here you people are lovely jai hind